this is a new top and i'm absolutely in love with it i love these kinds of tops so random but just read just read love it i love tops that have slogans on it um i'm probably gonna buy more of these but yeah Hey, it's Mel, I hope you're doing well and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, it's lovely to have you here. Today, we're going to be looking at the story of Juliana Kopeck. And I think I've said her second name wrong. Um, I can't pronounce her second name properly. So for the sake of making this easier for me, we're just going to be referring to her by her first name, Julianne. This is a story of strength, survival and hope. This case is very similar to the story of Annette Herfkins, which I did a whole video on and I'll link that in the description box down below. With that being said, let's get into it. Julianne was born on 10th of October 1954 in Lima, Peru. Her parents were Maria and Hans Willem Kopeck. Both of her parents worked as zoologists and Julianne was an only child. The family had moved to Peru to study wildlife. When Julianne was 14 years old, her parents left Lima to establish Panguana, a research station in the Amazon rainforest. Julianne became a jungle child of sorts and learned survival techniques that would later come in handy. Now Julianne did go to school and she completed her exams and she graduated on the 23rd of December 1971. She would later attend at the University of Kiel and the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich. On Christmas Eve 1971, Julianne was travelling with her mum from Lima to the eastern city of Pucalpa to visit her dad who was working in the Amazon rainforest. At the time, Julianne was 17 years old. She was seated in 19F and on board a Lancer Flight 508. The flight was meant to be an hour long. It was a smooth ride until the clouds got darker and the turbulence got worse. Suddenly, the plane was in the midst of a massive thunderstorm. Lightning began and at this point the plane was in a swirl of pitch black clouds. A lightning bolt struck the motor and the plane broke into pieces. People began screaming and all Julianne could hear was the wind in her ears. Julianne was strapped to her seat but she only just realised that she was free falling for a few moments before she lost consciousness. Julianne fell 10,000 feet down into the middle of the Peruvian rainforest and somehow she was still alive. She had a deep gash on her calf and a broken collarbone. Julianne spent the next 11 days struggling to stay alive. The next day after the crash, Julianne woke up, she was in shock and she had a concussion and she could not see very well out of one eye. It took half a day for her to fully get up. Julianne set out to find her mum, but she was unsuccessful. While looking for her mum, Julianne came across a small well. At this point, Julianne was feeling very tired and hopeless. But then she remembered some survival advice that her dad told her. Which was, if you see water, follow it downstream. That's where civilization is. A small stream will flow into a bigger one, and then a bigger one, and an even bigger one, and finally you'll run into help. So Julianne began her journey down the stream. She would sometimes walk or swim. On the fourth day of her trek, Julianne came across three passengers, who were still strapped to their seats. One of them was a woman, and they were all dead. Julianne even poked at the woman, thinking it was her mum, but it wasn't. Along with the passengers was a bag of sweets. This would be Julianne's only source of food. It was around this time that Julianne heard and saw rescue planes and helicopters above, but all of her attempts to get their attention failed. This plane crash prompted the biggest surge in Peru's history. However, due to the forest and the thick trees, aircrafts were not able to spot the wreckage, let alone a person. On the ninth day in the forest, Julianne came across a hut and she decided to rest in it. She then heard voices. Three Peruvian missionaries who lived in the hut found Julianne. The three men let her stay another night and the next day they took her by boat to a local hospital that was in a small town nearby. Julianne was treated for her injuries and she was reunited with her dad. After she was rescued, Julianne learned that her mum did survive the plane crash, but she soon died due to her injuries. Julianne helped the police to locate the plane, and over the next few days, the bodies from the crash were found. Of the 91 people that were on the plane, Julianne was the only survivor, and she was also thrown into the media spotlight after the crash. 
After everything that she had been through, including the death of her mum, she developed a fear of flying and for years she had nightmares. Eventually, in 1980, Julianne went on to study biology at a university in Germany. She then returned to Peru to do research in mammalogy. I cannot say that word properly. Julianne got married and became Julianne Diller. Over two decades later, in 1998, Julianne revisited the crash site and took a picture in front of the wreckage. She was later in a documentary called Wings of Hope, which told her story of survival. Julianne overcame the trauma of the event. But one question that still haunts her to this day is, why was she the only survivor? Well, that's the incredible survival story of Julianne Kopeck. She survived 11 days in the jungle. She faced shock, a concussion. She had a broken collarbone. She survived pretty much starvation, probably dehydration. Like, If you're going to look up to anyone, it'll be this woman, okay? Because she is just so incredible. That's all for today. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.